How many times have you wished you could make your own uh, workspace inside of Topaz Studio 2? Well, you can, and today I'm going to show you how to do it. So without any further ado, let's get started. Here we are in Photoshop, and I have this really cool picture of this, this man right here, and I think he has a lot of character and things like that. I ran it into Topaz Adjust AI just to give it a little more detail, a little bit more pop, and it ended up with this right here. Okay, so now what I want to do is go and show you an example of what I'm talking about for building your own workspace, and that is I want to run this into, after I duplicate the background there, I'm going to run this into an old Topaz filter called um, Simplify 4. This is the way Topaz used to do things back in the day, uh, and I have all their filters from when they started, actually. And I, you know, I've always been a big fan of Topaz, but this is Simplify 4. And inside of Topaz Studio 2, we have that filter called Abstraction. But there's a lot of other uh, adjustments attached to uh, doing a simplification type image. So I want to show you in here. So we have all these different adjustments and let me collapse this simplify. So we have a simplify section. We have an adjust section edges where we can have edges and we can add a curve tool. Then we have local adjustments and finishing touches. So this was just one um, plugin application. It had all these adjustments attached to it. So what I want to do is find out what they're using inside of this Simplify uh, plugin, and then I'm going to show you how to make a workspace, which will have pretty much all of these same adjustments in the workspace. Because these are the things that you're going to want to work work together with to get you a finalized result. For instance, let's open up Simplify here and you'll notice they have the Simplify. This is the same as the abstraction filter right here, the Simplify section. And then we have a section called Adjust. And uh, this Adjust section uh, pretty much has everything in it that you would have inside of the uh, Precision Contrast uh, filter other than the Precision Contrast adjustments like the micro and things like that, but the dynamics and the structure boost and things like that could all be taken care of, honestly, with that precision contrast filter. So I've added that to my workspace. And then we have edges. Now we have a filter in Topaz Studio 2 called edges. We'll, we'll add that to it. And then of course the curve tool, we do have a curve tool in Topaz Studio 2 that we'll add. And then we have uh, this local adjustments is just basically dodging and burning. So we don't have to worry about that one. And then we have finishing touches, which will have vignette. So adding a vignette to your image, a quad tone, and uh, transparency is nothing more than, op than an opacity slider, which will also have that inside of Topaz Studio too. So I'm gonna show you how to build a workspace. Now Topaz Studio 2 does not enable you to make workspaces, but I'm gonna show you a very simple workaround for that. So stick with me. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this, go back into Photoshop, and then we're gonna to launch Topaz Studio 2, and I'll show you how to make your own custom workspace. Now it's time to build a custom workspace, and I'm gonna build this one based upon that Simplify 4 plugin which was a plugin that I really used a lot and I loved it. And now we're going to be able to recreate all the uh, tools involved, all the adjustments involved with that particular plugin. So I went ahead and renamed my Lair Topaz Studio 2. Let's launch uh, Topaz Studio 2 and get to work. Remember, we're trying to create a workspace based off of that uh, Simplify 4 plugin that Topaz made back in the day which was a great plugin and it's really great for making these simplified artistic type of images. So follow me here. The first filter you want to add, we're going to add a bunch of filters here and we're going to do some adjustments too. So follow me very closely in what I do here to uh, duplicate this workspace. So what we're going to do is start out with the abstraction filter. Secondly, we're going to add an edges filter. Now we have to make some changes on this edges filter here. What we need to do is um, change the edge type. You don't have to change the edge type from color to monochrome, but I like to start out with monochrome. So that's up to you. You can change that or not. Leave it in dark here. Keep the edge strength off, the simplify edge off. Suppress weak edges, take that off. Uh, suppress small edges, take it the whole way off. So we want these all to be zero, except edge thickness. We want to run this up to 50. That's halfway. 
So I highly recommend that you do that. Now you're not gonna see any edges come here because the edge strength is turned off here. And then the edge resolution, leave it at one. And now come up to add filter, and now we're gonna add a curves filter, because you remember, Simplify 4 had a curves filter, and now a precision contrast filter. And where are you, right here? And then a precision detail filter. I added this because I feel it really helps. They didn't really have that in the original Simplify 4, but I think it helps, so I'm adding it here. So you can add it or not, but I highly recommend that you do. Uh, then a uh, quad tone filter will be our next filter, which is right, I can never find this one, right here, quad tone. And then the last filter is a vignette filter. And what you need to do with the vignette filter is, where are you, right here is it defaults at a dark edge, you know, a dark vignette around the edges. So just take the strength and shut it off. Okay, the whole way. So here are all our filters that, that will be involved with this Simplify um, workspace. So now let's save out our workspace. We're gonna save it as a look, but pay particular attention on how I'm telling you how to save this look. So what you wanna do is click on Save Look and give it a number. For instance, I'm gonna call this number one, period. I'm gonna call this simplify workspace. Now I recommend that you call it a workspace, that way you'll know it is a workspace. Now, the reason I'm giving it a number is, numbers will always be at the top of the stack of looks. And you'll see that here in a second. So let's go ahead and say that. You can give it a, a description if you want to, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna click OK. So now let me go ahead and delete all of these filters here. Just go ahead and delete them all. And now we're gonna go to Add Look. Now, I wanna show you. Here's Look Category, My Looks. Now, if yours isn't set for My Looks, it may be set for uh, Bold or something like that or any anything it could be set for. It could be set for all. If it's set for all, you'll notice numbers appear first because there's my Simplify workspace, easy to get to. So if you're under the all category or if you are under the my looks category, it's gonna be the very first one. So remember, it's a look you made, just go under my looks and it'll be the first one there. So if you save out another workspace, say you may wanna have another workspace for painterly effects using the impression filter. Well, you could call that number two and give that a name like uh, painterly or something like that. So you could have different workspaces, but put a number in front of them and I think you understand what I'm saying. It makes sense. So now if I click on simplify workspace and click apply, leave it at the full amount strength and you'll notice no changes happen to the image here. So if you see the before and after, it's the same, all right? But now there is our Simplify workspace, and then we have all the filters involved there. Now, the way this workspace is gonna work, you're gonna wanna start at the very bottom here and kinda work your way up, okay? To, for this to work right, you wanna start, obviously it's a Simplify workspace, so abstraction will be your first filter that you're gonna use, cause you're gonna wanna like simplify this image by taking the Simplify size and moving it to the right and giving it some simplification here. And let me just get it to a point where I think it looks good. And that looks good right there. This tutorial is about how to make a workspace, but however, let's work with this workspace and see how it works with all the different filters that we've added. Okay, so let me just play with this a little bit. Okay, so now I have my simplify size here. You know, I could play with my feature boost if I wanted to. In fact, I might. I'm gonna change it to YUV instead of RGB and I get rid of all the different color things in there. Now that's too much, so let me just pull it back a little bit. Something like there, maybe, right around there. And um, I'm not gonna touch these other two here. And now let's go to edges, because edges works really well when you're working with uh, Simplify Images. So let's add a little bit of edge strength. Now remember, I'm on monochrome, and see the edges start to come, isn't, come in, isn't that cool? So we can add edges. And then we could come here and say, simplify the edge. That'll get rid of uh, some, of, some of the edges. See, it gives it a more simplified look. So we can play with that. And just have fun and get it just to the place that you like it. We can thicken up the edges if we want to here with the edge thickness. 
So we can play around here and do different things. And again, I'm just going to work through here and see how these filters work. Now let's go to curves. You don't have to use all these uh, tools in here, but just the ones you want. But say, for instance, with curves, I may want to lighten up the midtones a little bit. So I'll pull up on the curve a little bit right there. And now we come to precision contrast. Now we have all our uh, different contrast adjustments here. For instance, let's start adjusting these a little bit. I'm going to give this a little bit of low contrast. Just I want this image to pop a little bit. Something like there looks cool. How about a little bit of medium? Yeah, that looks good. And then I could play with micro and high if I wanted to. But we also have lighting here. If I wanted to darken the shadows, I can move this to the left. Yeah, and darken the shadows up a little bit. I can play with the midtones and highlights. I have equalization. Of course, I have all these really cool color adjustments here. You don't, Again, you don't have to use all these uh, filters, but just use the ones you want. And then you have precision detail. Say, for instance, I want to bump up these small details a little bit. I could use that and just bring a little bit more grungy look to this thing here. And of course we have the medium details and the high details. And of course you can work with shadows and highlights and you have more lighting controls here. You have a black point and a white point, which is nice. So I want my black point to be a little darker so I could move this to the left a little bit. See, so darken up that black point. That's too much. Maybe something right around here. I like that. And of course, we can finish it off with a little bit of uh, vignette here. And remember, I when we made this preset, we had we had the opacity turned the whole way off. So now we could just drag it the whole way to the right, and we just add a dark vignette. And of course, you can adjust the center of the vignette, the transition, the whole nine yards. Or if that's too much of a vignette, you can pull it back a little bit, ease it off a little bit. So we went from here to here, but we made our own workspace. And of course. You, this is one really cool thing that you have with a workspace. If you come up to the group up here and click this, now you have the opacity here. So what? You can pull the opacity off a little bit. And, you know, if you take it the whole way off, you have the original image in there. And then you can just start building it up, building that opacity up, and then stopping at the point where you think just about looks right to you and just quit at that point. And then, of course, we can come up to add filter and we can add more filters, maybe an impression filter, turn it into a painting, whatever. But that's how you make workspaces. So I'm happy with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click accept and that'll send me back into Photoshop. Now you know how to make your own custom workspace inside of Topaz Studio 2. It's going to really save you a lot of time. And think of it, you can uh, make all kind of workspaces. You can have a workspace for like uh, doing impressionistic uh, type artistic paintings. You know, one for adding detail. This particular one was based off of the uh, Simplify 4 plugin for doing simplified images like this particular one here. So give workspaces a try. I mean, Topaz came out without the ability to add workspaces, but I'm showing you a real simple and easy way to make your own workspaces. And I think it is quite effective and I think you're going to enjoy it. So try it out. Hey, if you enjoyed this uh, tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified.